life and have it more abundantly. And the moment you get Jesus into your life, then abundant life comes with him. So this is a glorious time to be alive, even though we're being challenged with a lot of difficulties that our nation is facing, our uh, individuals, family, homes, relationships. But to tell you the truth, God is still on the throne and he made a promise to us, to every believer, to every child of God. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so th the word is be encouraged, take good courage. For the Lord says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you until the end. God knows where you are. He knows where I am. The Bible said he's concerned about them whom he knows. And he's concerned about his children. So I want to take a few moments to go in the scriptures because I believe that we need the word of God today more than any other time that we have ever lived. Because today we're getting to a time in history where we begin to see the signs the signs that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, the signs of the end. When you see these signs, he says, that's wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pestilence. And he mentioned a, a series of difficulties and tragedies that will hit the earth. But he says, when you see these signs, know that the end is near. He said the end is not yet, but it's near. So know that there is a that we are living in a time where Jesus is soon to return. I know we've heard this before, but now all the signs are there. The signs are lined up to show us that everything that Jesus predicted, everything he prophesied, surely will come to pass. And we're close to that time right now. So I want to take a few minutes. To, we'll break the bread. We'll feed our spirits. Someone, my one of my mentors uh, in ministry over the years, used to say, "You you you have to feed your spirit." and starve your doubts. Feed your faith, starve your doubts. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're gonna get some faith tonight. Tonight, you are going to get faith because faith comes by hearing the word. So let's feed our faith and let's starve our doubts. This is a perfect time to get in the word of God. So here's what, I, here's what the Lord have for you today. The power of God's word never changes. God's word is power, power. Say it with me, power. Say it again, power. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass, but not one jot or tittle of my word will pass away. There is power in the word of God. The more we know God's word is the more we walk in the power of his might. So the Bible teaches us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What does that mean? It means that in ourselves, we're not strong, but in Christ, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. No matter what you go through, if, you, if we depend on him, he will bring you out of it. He knew when you got in it, he will also bring you out. So I wanna take a few minutes. In fact, I'm gonna ask you, if you don't have your Bibles with you, go get it quickly, sit down, and relax and let's just get into the word. Let's just feed our spirits tonight, okay? So first of all, I wanna say this to you that when we talk about the power of the word, it means that God speaks his word and he says, my word will not return to me void. Now in the book of Hebrews, we won't turn there right now, but in Hebrews, the 11th chapter tells us this. It says that the entire worlds were framed by the word of God. Everything we see, the entire universe and the worlds that exist out there was framed by God's word. In other words, his word has power. We go back and we see in the beginning, in the beginning of creation, according to the scriptures, 6,000 years ago, God came on the scene and the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. God said, light be. God said, and God said, everything he said came to pass because there are power, there was power in his word, in his word. So when he spoke it, nothing came into existence until God spoke it. This is a principle that God is teaching us as believers because we are the children of God. And he's given us the same dynamic opportunity to say when we say things, Things should happen because we have to believe that the power that God has resides on the inside of us. In fact, the scripture says that 
if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he'll quicken you. He'll quicken that mortal body. He's talking about healing and restoration. But we have power. There's power in our words. The whole world, the worlds were created by the word of Almighty God. The whole world. It is so powerful. It is so dynamic that sometimes we miss what we have as believers. Because, you know, Jesus said, he also said, the works that I do will you do also. I want you to notice that much of the healings and deliverance and the things that you see that Jesus had performed while he was here on the earth, he spoke it. He spoke it. There was a man whose daughter was ill that came to Jesus and said, my daughter's about to die. She's sick. Would you come to my house and heal her? And Jesus didn't hesitate. There was another man that said, come. And Jesus, and he said, listen, you don't have to come to my house. All you have to do is say the word. And I know my servant will be well. And Jesus spoke the word and his servant got healed. Power in his words. Power. He doesn't have to, he says what he means, and he means what he says. And so in the script, in the word, which we will turn to, in fact, I want you to, I'm sure you have your Bibles by now. Let's go over to the, the book of, of Joshua for a moment. I want us to get to Joshua, Joshua in chapter one. Joshua and the first chapter. This is an exciting, exciting passage. In fact, I want to read one verse. There's one verse in Joshua chapter one, a very familiar verse that most of us would know. If you're a believer, you know this, this verse. And that's in verse 8. Watch what it says in verse 8. It's, he says, uh, this book of the law. Now, now, let me give you the backdrop of why this is being said. Now, Joshua is now, he now succeeded Moses. Moses is now dead. And now the mantle of, Joshua, of Moses and the anointing that was upon Moses was now placed upon Joshua to finish the work that Moses started, that assignment that God gave him. It was Joshua that brought the children of Israel into Canaan. Moses started the journey, but, but after he died, Joshua took his place. And when Joshua stepped up to take the place of Moses, God showed up and spoke to him. And this is what he says. In fact, let's just go back to a few verses. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to verse 5. Well, let's begin at verse 6. It says, he's, God is speaking to Joshua now. This is God talking. He said, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. For to, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. This is God talking. And then he says in verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. He said, don't turn, don't turn from it to the right hand or the left hand, that you may prosper wherever you go. He said, if you stay in the word and you don't turn to the right or to the left, he said, you will prosper you will prosper, you will prosper, you will prosper wherever you go. In other words, God wants you to prosper, but prosperity comes out of his word, being, being a student and one that stays in the word, stays in the word. Now, here's the verse that we need to look at. Verse 8, it says, The book of the law, or this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And watch this. He said, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Man, that's powerful. That's powerful. This is God talking to Joshua. He, he said, God is talking about the strength of his word, the power that's in his word. He said, Joshua, here's what he says. If you would... Don't let this word depart from your mouth. This book of the law, which is the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth. Notice the word must be in his mouth. Notice what he's saying. In other words, you got to keep talking it, is what he's saying to Joshua. You got you to keep saying what I say. You got to keep saying my word. Don't let my word depart from your mouth. 
And, and then he says, but you shall meditate. Meditate in it day and night. Meditate in it day and night so that you might observe to do. Now, that's interesting. It's interesting because th the truth is, the moment you start speaking God's word, speaking the word is meditation. That's how you meditate in God's word. In fact, I, the definition of meditate means to ponder by talking to yourself. To ponder by talking to yourself. This book of the law, this word, shall not depart from your mouth. But thou shalt meditate in it day and night. Meditate in it then. It means to ponder by, ponder by talking to yourself. In fact, the other definition of, of meditate means, in the Hebrew, it means to quietly repeat in a soft tone. Repeat to yourself in a soft tone. See, meditation is not what we think in the English in our English speaking uh, language, and here in the, in, in the West, we say when we talk about, when we think of meditating, we think of having, having a mental exercise where you get quiet and you get, you know, you don't think of anything. You, you, you shut your mind down. You, you get to the point where you're, not, you're in, a, in a zone where there's nothing that you're thinking about, nothing is coming into your mind and it's a mental exercise. But that's not what it means in the scripture. That's not what it means here to meditate. It doesn't mean to have an empty mind. It doesn't mean that you stay uh, soberly quiet and not let anything come into your mind and just float into the atmosphere. No, when God says to Joshua, you will meditate in it, he's saying that you need to speak it. And that's why he said, let it not depart from your mouth. Because when the word of God is in your mouth, you're releasing faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing the word. When you hear it and you have faith, that's how faith is released. It's released out of your mouth. And that's where the power comes from. When we speak God's word, power is released to create. Power is released to change things. What did it say about God? God says, the, the, the things, God speak those things which be not as though they were, which means the things that he, need, he wants to come to pass, he has to say it. And God gives us this example when he says, light be, when he spoke into the atmosphere. And he spoke and he said, let it be. When, and God said, and God said, and God said. And every time it says God said, something happened. That's the power of God's word. And so now God is encouraging us. He's saying to us that if we spend our time in his word, if we, if we stay in his word, meditate in it, speak. In other words, speak it to yourself. Just keep speaking God's word. Let's stop talking what the world is saying. Let's stop speaking what we've been hearing from the media and, and from our politicians and from social media and all of the other avenues that we've been listening to the magazines, the, the, the books that we read. Let's speak what God says. When you say what God says, that's how power is released because power is in God's word. Power comes from his word. And this is, this is so powerful that God has given this instruction to Joshua. And think about it. Joshua was in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. We live under a new covenant. And the Bible tells us this covenant that we live under, the covenant of grace, grace and mercy. In this new covenant that we live, on, we live under, it's, it's a covenant of peace, a covenant of grace. And, he, and the Bible tells us that this covenant, under this covenant, we have much better promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it worked for Joshua under the old covenant, It'll work, certainly work for us under this new covenant. Joshua wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit like you and I are. The Holy Spirit was upon him. But the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in him as it is today. Today, as a believer, as a child, a woman, a man of God, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, he not only comes upon you, but he comes in you. And that gives us power. In our words, we speak 
the words of God and things happen, things change when you say when you speak God's word. Joshua, meditate in my word. Keep in mind, day and night, it means to mutter, to speak to yourself in a low tone. It means to repeat in a soft tone. It also means to ponder by talking to yourself. Not ponder by thinking of nothing, but ponder it by talking to yourself. Hallelujah. That's where the power comes from. As believers, we do have power because the Bible tells us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What does that mean? It means that there's a greater one lives in us that can come out of us and it comes out of us through the power of our words. But your words have to be the correct words and it needs to be the word of God. Now watch, let's, 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 let's read it once again. Once again, the eighth verse. <clears throat> that He said, Joshua, if you meditate day and night, he's speaking to you. Whatever your name is, you put your name in there. This is not just for Joshua, this is for all of us, especially under this new covenant. Put your name. He's saying Joshua. He's saying Wayne. If you meditate in a day, my word day and night to observe that, that you may observe to do observe to do according to all that is written in it. Something happens when the word of God is in you, when we continue to meditate. You hear yourself say what God's word says. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. If you keep saying it, you will eventually convince yourself of it you will speak into your own spirit the words of God. He said so that you will observe. See, the key is beginning to do what God says. That's where the blessings come from. When we begin to do what God says, the blessings flow when we do what He says. But how do you get to the point of one to be a doer? How do you get to the point? How do we get to the point where we become doers of the word? Have you noticed much of the people we know? Many people we know and some, we, some is, is different, but many that we do know, uh, they're not doers. They hear the word. They can repeat the word, but they're not doing it. God is instructing us that when we meditate, we become doers, that we may observe to do. God wants us to get to the point of not just hearing the word and having faith, but to begin to do the word. That's where he begins to bless. He begins to bless us when we start doing what he says. Amen. Even in the face of opposition, even when things are contrary to what you see, what you hear, when it's contrary to what you hear, when it's contrary to what you see, we just, we just say what God says. That's, that's how you start doing the word. Now watch this. If you meditate day and night so that you will observe to do. See, we, we start doing it because it becomes such a part of you, such a part of us, that you can't help but step out and start doing what you've been filled with. If you've been filled with the word of God, you are moved to start doing it so that you might observe to do all that is written therein. And then watch, watch this. This part is very, very powerful. He says, uh, you will observe to do all that is written therein. And he says, and then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Now you notice God didn't say I'll prosper you. He didn't say I'll make you prosperous. God didn't say... I will make you successful. Watch this. He said, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. And then, which means when you start doing what God says to do, success will flow. Success will come. Prosperity will flow. You will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Start doing it. How do you get to the point of doing it, it begins by reading, it begins by studying, it begins by meditating, particularly meditating in his word. And the first thing God says to Joshua in this, in this 
place where he says, let the word not depart out of your mouth, which means it needs to stay in our mouth. We need to keep talking and keep saying the things of God. Don't let it leave your mouth. That's the key to victory. It's the key to victory. You remember when Israel, before they possessed the promised land, they had to say something. And what they said was a shout. The entire six days they were commanded to be quiet. But on the seventh day, something had to come out of their mouth to give them the victory. Something needed to come out of them so they can have victory. It wasn't a quiet day. It was a day of shouting. God says, shout for I have given you the victory. Hallelujah. Shout for I have given you the land. Something had to come out of their mouth. So he's saying now, listen, Joshua, the words that's in your mouth, you keep it. Don't let it depart. It means that when you get up in the morning, the words that you have read and studied, the words that you have, mem even that which you have memorized, just repeat it to yourself. That's what the scripture means. That's what the Bible means when it says to meditate in my word. That's what meditation is. Meditation is speaking. It's not a mental exercise. It's words. Words that come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's your words. That's meditation. You don't have to be loud. Uh, the definition is a soft tone. In other words, you're encouraging yourself. You're speaking to yourself. You will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. God, God didn't say, I'll prosper you. I'll give you success. He said, you will do it. Because you then will begin to speak the things of God. And as just like when God says, light be, it, be, it, it came, it happened. When God said it, it happened. That's where I believe the Lord wants to bring each and every one of us into that place, that intimacy with God, that place with God, that we'll begin to say what God says and see things happen. Now, let's take this a step further. Let's go a step further with this. Turn over to, to Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 103, the book of Psalms and 103. Psalms 103. Now, this is powerful. I hope you're learning something tonight because this, this, is, this is going to be a life-changing message for many of the watching right now who haven't yet grasped, grab a hold and understand the power that's in God's Word and how we can use it in this life and the life that we now live, even with the turmoil that we're seeing and the, and the, uh, the despair that many people are going through and the fear. People are fearful. People are despondent. People are discouraged. Even in those times, this is the time more than any time that we need to start speaking and start saying and speaking the word of God. You'll make your way prosperous. He says you'll have good success. Hallelujah. Prosperous. Now, Psalms 103. We're looking at the Psalms 103 and verse... Let's look at verse, uh, verse 20. Psalms 103 and verse 20, the 20th verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 20, it says, watch, listen, listen, read it with me if you got your Bibles with you. It says, bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. <laughs> now, now wait, wait, wait. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. Excel in strength, watch this, to do his word. The angels are commissioned to do God's word. The angels are commissioned to do his word. They perform the word of God. In fact, in Hebrews 1, I believe it's verse 14 that says, that God says, 
and the angels, he called them spirits. He said, are they not ministering spirits that, that are sent forth to minister to them that are heirs of salvation? He's going to minister. <laughs> the angels are assigned to minister for you and I because we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. They are assigned to minister to us. Now watch this. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. In other words, they get strong. They, they have power. They're strong. And they get stronger and stronger. But watch this. It says, bless the Lord. How does angels bless the Lord? Those that excel in strength, he says, who do his word. God is blessed when the angels that he's assigned to us do and perform his word. Hallelujah. God is blessed. You know, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. We're told to bless the Lord in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord at all times. Let his praise be continually be in our mouth. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who does his word. God gets blessed when his word is acted upon, when his word is acted when his word is done through his servants and through his angels. God is blessed. How about Psalms? How about the other Psalms where it says, uh, I, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. It says, Bless the Lord. That's, I believe it's Psalms 1. And all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Wow. God is blessed. That's how we bless God. You know, we ask God to bless us. Bless me with this, Lord. Bless me with that, God. Bless me. Bless my children. Bless my house. Bless my business. Bless my finance. Bless my marriage. Bless my relationship. How do we bless him? God gets blessed when we do his word. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's my mind my emotions and my will. When I put my mind, my emotions, and my will towards God, God's get, God, He gets blessed. He is blessed when I do it. He's blessed when you do it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. God don't want us to forget the things that He's promised us, the blessings that He's, he's put in His Word for us. The blessings of the Lord is what make rich and have no sorrows. Not just talking about money, rich in every way. Rich financially, spiritually, emotionally, socially, in every, in every aspect of our lives. God gets blessed. When we forget not all of his benefits. And then he listed his benefits. He said, watch this. Forget not all of his benefits. Who heals all our diseases. We can't forget that God is our healer. Let's not forget that God is our healer. He heals all our diseases. It says, who forgives all of our iniquities. Wow. God gets blessed when we, his children, don't forget what he's done for us. When, he, when we don't forget his blessings that he's poured out upon us. God gets blessed when we remember it, when we repeat it. When we remind him of it, when we talk about it, God is blessed. How do you bless the Lord? Don't forget his benefits. Don't forget that he is your healer. Don't forget that he is the one that forgives you of all of your iniquities. Hallelujah. He said he heal all my diseases. He forgives me. He forgives me of all of my iniquities. He blesses my life. Fill me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Ha! Hallelujah. The, he gives us a list of things that when we remember that we repeat it to him. Oh, my soul, and forget not. We need to remind ourselves everything that God has done for us. Remind ourselves of the word of God. Speak it. Meditate upon it. Repeat it to ourselves. Talk to ourselves. You, when you get up in the morning, you say it. When you're driving in your car, we say it. When we're at work, we say it. When you're in the grocery store, you, you, you mutter, you say the things of God. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. 
I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm the righteous. The righteous flourish like a palm tree. The righteous grow like a cedar in Lebanon. He says, everyone that's planted, I'm planted in the house of the Lord. Everyone that's planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And he said, even in your old age, you'll still bear fruit. You'll be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. The Lord is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. Man, I keep talking his word. Just keep speaking his word. Speak it to yourself. Faith comes by hearing. Didn't say who have to speak the word. You can say it to yourself by hearing. You let you, you and I need to hear us. I need to hear me say what God's word says. That's how faith comes. It doesn't have to be the preacher. It doesn't have to be the pastor or the teacher. It doesn't have to be the evangelist. It could be me. If faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word, why couldn't I speak the word and hear what it says? I encourage you and I encourage everyone that's watching right now. When you get up tomorrow morning, anytime you have an opportunity to read God's word, make a habit of reading it out loud. Read it out loud so you can hear yourself say it. And every time you do, you're getting faith. Faith comes by hearing. Every time you speak, faith comes. Faith comes. Hear yourself speak. Hallelujah. Forget not his benefits. In other words, God don't want us to forget. He don't want us to forget. He doesn't want us to forget. So we bless him when we don't forget. When we remember, he's blessed. He heals all my diseases. He forgives me of all my iniquities. Fulfill my life. He's, he crowned my life with loving kindness and tender mercies. He redeemed me from destruction. He fills my mouth with good things. So my youth is renewed like the eagle. God gets blessed. He gets blessed. And I, I believe that's why the Lord says, come, let's reason together. Let's reason together. And he says, come on, put me in remembrance of my word. Hallelujah. He said, put me in remembrance of my word. In other words, remind me of what I say. Remind me of what I said to you. Remind me so I can perform it in your life. But it has to be in your mouth. The word of God would not do anything. Very little. If, it's in your, if it stays in your mind, if it stays in my hand, this is God's word. See, this book does not contain the word of God. This book is the word of God. All of it. But it doesn't do me any good if it stays in my hand. Even if it's in my mind, it doesn't do me much good. Even if it's in my heart, it doesn't do much good to my life. It does me good when I start acting upon it and begin by saying what he says. That's when power is released. And that's when faith is released. Hallelujah. You might as well shout hallelujah. I hope you're getting blessed because I'm just blessed just talking to myself about this. Hearing myself say this, I'm blessed just by hearing it. Hallelujah. So once again, just watch. This is, this is so good. In that 20th verse, once again, bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength. Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength. Now, let me back up a bit. This is a command. Think about it. God is commanding the angels. This is a command. He says, bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength. This is a command. Now, what? here's why. Here's why. Angels who excel, his angels who excel in strength, who do his word. He's commanding them. You bless me when you do what my word says. Watch this. Who excel in strength, who do my word. And the next word says, heeding. Say it with me. Say heeding. Hmm. The King James says, hearkening. If you're reading from the King James, I'm reading from the New King James. It says, heeding. 
the King James says, who hearkens, mm, excel in strength, who do his word, heeding or hearkening to the voice, to the voice of his word. Hmm. You, his angels, who heeding, who heeding to the word of God, to do his word. Hmm. But heeding to the voice, to the voice of his word. God gets blessed when they do his word, but how are they going to get his word to do it? Somebody has to voice it. We have to voice. Notice it says, who heeds or who is heeding. And I, watch, the word heeding means to hear with attention or interest. Angels, when they hear the word of God, they attend to it. They give attention to it. They give attention and they give in, they're interested in hearing God's word. It means to hear with attention or interest. Hearkening to the voice of his word. Hmm. Where's the voice going to come from? Where's that voice coming from? That voice is coming from you, child of God. It's coming from you, and that voice is coming from me. That's why we ought not to say what we think. Don't say what we think. Don't, don't use our own reasoning. Let's not use... <laughs> it's not about my opinion or your opinion. I don't want to say what my opinion is. I, I don't want to say what my opinion is about this coronavirus. No. I don't want to say what my opinion is about this pandemic that's all over the world and right here in America. I don't want to say what my opinion is. I want to say what God says because the angels do his word. They heed. They heed. They hearken. They give their attention and their interest to the voice that speaks his word. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. I'm talking to myself just like I'm talking to you. I'm speaking. I'm encouraging myself. So together, together, let's together say his word because that's what they do. That's what they do. They do his word. They hearken to the voice, the voice of his word. Hallelujah. You might as well shout hallelujah. Praise God. They hearken to the voice of his word. Where are they going to hear the voice? They hear it from you. They hear it from me. The voice of his word. Mm. And every time they do his word, God is blessed. Are you listening to me? I hope you're listening. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're being blessed. Amen. They hearken to the voice of his word. So we've got, in other words, God furnishes the, vo the, the word and we furnish the voice. We furnish the voice. God furnished his word. He started with God. God gave us his word and he wants us to voice it so the angels of the Lord could perform it. Simple. But that's the truth. Hallelujah. That's shouting grounds. That's, that's a place to shout. Say, thank you, Lord. It's, it is, it's easier said than done. But we need to practice. Practice saying what God says. I, let's not say what the media is saying to us. Let's not say what the media is saying. Because most of them, most of them are saying the same things. And every, most of what they say breeds fear. People are afraid. People are tormented. People are scared. People are in hiding. I'm talking about even some of God's people are running afraid and hiding in fear, afraid to go outside, afraid to leave the house. I know we've been on lockdown, but I understand that we, we are attempting to obey the law of the land. But there's some things that you're able to do. They says the part of the law says that you can leave your house to go to the grocery store and for essentials. Well, church is an essential. Amen. The church is an essential, just like the grocery store is. Mm. Amen. Might as well say amen. And we have some of our believers, some of our uh, brothers and sisters afraid. They just walk around afraid. Well, I'm not afraid 
of coronavirus, COVID-19. I'm not afraid of it. No, because God have not given me a spirit of fear. Neither has he given you a spirit of fear. You don't have fear. If you're a child of God, fear is a spirit. God didn't give it to you. If you're afraid to go outside, if you're afraid to, to touch anything, I believe we ought to be careful. I believe that we ought to be mindful. We ought to do the things that they, they tell us to do, like using the sanitizer and watch what we touch and places that we go. Absolutely. But I tell you what, we not ought to walk in fear. Because if it's fear, God is not of God. I refuse, I refuse COVID-19. Refuse it. I refuse this pandemic to be at my house. I have a right to say no to it. First of all, it didn't come from God, and I'm a child of God, and I don't receive it. Amen. I said amen. I hope you're saying amen where you are. And wherever you're listening from, I hope you're saying amen. We're, we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his body in the earth. Why are we afraid when we, we're in this world, but we're not of this world? We're agents of God's kingdom. We're kingdom agents. We talk about it. We've been preaching it. There are many prophesying, and we talk about it for years. We've been preaching. This is what I've been preaching. I've been preaching the, the healing power of God, the deliverance of God. God is able and will give us prosperity when we, when we learn how to walk in his word. I've been teaching this for years. Now it's time for me to live it. Amen. Why are we running afraid and, and afraid and scared of this thing called coronavirus, COVID-19? When that's not, listen, that's a name. And the Bible tells us that God has raised up Jesus and given him a name that's above every name. And he said that at that name, the name of Jesus, who we have access to, as children of God, we are the household of God. That name, Jesus, we have access to that name. In fact, the Bible says when that name is mentioned, all of heaven comes to attention and all of hell shakes. Amen. The devil trembled at the sound of that name. This virus didn't come from God. God didn't send it. But I believe God's going to use it for his glory. He's going to use it. He's going to turn it around. And it's going to be a day of victory for the people of God. And for those who believe that God has the power and is willing to use his power to turn this around. This didn't come from God. And we should not be afraid. Because that fear is not of God. The name that's above every name. And thank God they gave this virus a name, and they gave it the name COVID-19, Corona. When every time, every, and I, I'm going to encourage you to do this, do this, and when you hear, every time you hear the word COVID-19, every time you hear that name, every time you hear coronavirus, every time you hear it, say Jesus Christ. Just say it. That's what I do. I could be in my bed. I could be just walking, driving, and coronavirus, the thought, just the name. Every time I hear it, I say, Jesus Christ, Jesus, the anointed one, because I do not want to repeat that name over my life or the life of my household. Amen. And you should do the same. Why? Because you and I have the same level of authority. We have the authority in this earth to speak the word of God. And God, God's word has power. It's power. So I don't walk in fear. I refuse. Don't misunderstand me. I get attacked with fear at times. Fear comes on me at times. I could be sleeping at times, and all of a sudden, you're waking and just fearful. You know what? No, no, this is not of God. I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. This is not of God. It cannot be upon me, and I refuse to entertain it. I reject it. I renounce it in Jesus' name. I have the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear has no place in me or my house. Amen. No evil befall me. No plague come nigh my dwelling. 
What is nigh? How near is nigh? Is that by your front door? Is that down the street? Is it two blocks away? You determine where that is. I don't want that thing to come near my house, which means a block from my house. You stay away from me. Amen. I have the authority to do that. Just like Jesus, when he spoke to the wind, he spoke to the wave. He says, peace, settle down. We, we have that level of authority. I didn't say it. God says it. Hallelujah. I'll do these things, Jesus said, but greater works will you do in my name. So use the name of Jesus to dispel and destroy and reject anything that's not of God. My Bible says all good and perfect gifts come from above. And this coronavirus and this COVID-19 is not of God. It didn't come from God because it's not good and it's not of God. Amen. I don't know how I got there, but I hope you're listening. I hope you're being encouraged. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what the word of the Lord says. Hallelujah. By the way, that, that verse that we talked about in Psalms is Psalms 103, where it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. I did say Psalms 1, but it's Psalms 103. The same, the same chapter that we're in, but we, we, we're here in the 20th verse that says the angels heeds, hearken to the voice of his word. So what does that mean? It means that we need to start speaking his word. And they go into action. They go into action. Someone told me that our, every one of us, the Bible teaches that every one of us as believers, we have angels. Angels are assigned to us. And I'm told that most of their hands are tied. They can't do nothing for you if you keep speaking your opinion. And if you keep repeating what the media says, if you keep saying what the politicians are saying, if you keep saying what social media is perpetrating, everybody has an opinion. It's all opinions. Some things are factual, but facts is not truth. Some things they say is factual, but it's not the truth. Amen. If I contracted a cold, it's a fact that I have a cold, but the truth is I am healed by his stripes. That's the truth. The Bible says the truth you know is what makes you free. So I have to be free from it when I say what God says. God will do what he says, and he will perform his word in your life if you will just say it. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's difficult to say it when you're under pressure, but you've got to make yourself, you've got to tell yourself, no, this is my way out. That's your way of escape. That's what the Bible says is your way of escape. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't have this plan, but I, I, there's, there's, a, um, there's a passage in the book of James. In fact, if, if you would, Let's just turn there for a moment. We, we got a few minutes left. We'll turn to James. Thank you, Jesus. I believe it's James in chapter one. Hallelujah. James, just, let's go over to James. I, it, just, it just came in my spirit that I think I need to share it with you. Somebody needs to hear it. James chapter one. Hallelujah. Verse 22, James chapter 1, verse 22, talks about being a, a doer of the word, not just a hearer. You remember what God says uh, to Joshua? He's saying it to us tonight. He's saying it to us tonight that you observe to do. Now watch, verse 22. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. That means God wants us to hear the word all right. But he says, just don't hear it. Be doers also. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. <laughs> That's, in, other, in other words, we, can, we are self-deceived when we hear the word and don't do it. Self-deceived. No one has to deceive us. The preacher don't have to deceive you. Uh, uh, the lion preacher or prophet don't have to deceive you. We can deceive ourselves. And I, I believe uh, many deceive themselves. Uh, and I, I don't want to be in that category. I don't want to be, I want to act. I want to say, I want to do what God says. I want to be blessed. I want to stay healthy. I want to stay healed. Hallelujah. And I, I'm sure you want, to, you want the same thing for your life. 
and for the life of your children, life of your family. Now look at verse, once again, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. Watch this, verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Hmm. For he observe himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Hmm. Now, he said it's like a man that looks in the mirror, observes himself, his natural face in a mirror, in a glass. He observes himself, he goes away, and he forgets what kind of man he was. Now, when you think about it, he's, he's actually saying every one of us take time to look in the mirror. And, and most of us, of course, we do that at nightly. And when you get up in the morning, you get ready to get dressed to go to work or whatever you, your daily activities are. You, we, we always look in the mirror. And why do we look in the mirror? We look in the mirror to make adjustments, to change, to change something, something we don't like, something that, that is not pleasant, whether it's your hair or your face, whatever, we, we look into change. But he says, uh, the man that hears the word and don't do it is one that looks and didn't change nothing. He walks away. This is so important. He says, the scripture says, he walks away, he observes himself, walks away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. He forgets what he looks like. He says, don't do that when it comes to the word. Don't look at it, read it, walk away and forget it. Mm. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. God don't want us to forget. How do you practice not forgetting? We do it by meditation. Meditation, repeating to yourselves, muttering, speaking to yourselves. That's what David meant when he says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. You get enough of it out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you get much of God's word, you start speaking it. And that's how you meditate, even when you speak it, to yourself softly you're meditating you won't ever forget there's some things in this scripture in the scriptures in the word of god that i'll never forget because i've been saying it for years i've been repeating it repeating it, and saying it for years i won't ever forget it hmm. so which means when i look at it when i look at myself in the mirror in the word if the, the word is the mirror the word the mirror here represents the word of god when I look and, it, and I, it doesn't look like me, oh, something is wrong. This reflection, something needs to be changed because I'm not acting like that. I'm not acting like what God says. I'm not doing, well, if you back up in verse 21, it says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and all uh, overflow of wickedness, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. We got to put, put aside some things. When I, when I look at that and I look in the Word and I realize this mirror, which is the Word of God, it's reflecting me and, a, and I don't look like what this Word is saying. Then I need to make adjustments. I need to make some changes. And that's the, that's the beauty of God's Word. When you read it, if you don't look right, when you look in it, when it doesn't, when you know your actions doesn't line up with it, we got to make some changes. And that's what James is saying. He's saying, if you observe and you go away and forget what kind of man you are or what person you are, the adjustment that you're supposed to make, he's, and, and the next verse says, but he who looks into this law or this word of God, perfect law of liberty, he calls it, and does what? And continue in it, not just glimpse. <laughs> you don't glimpse of the mirror and make changes. You walk in the mirror and you take time to make the adjustments. It takes you a few minutes to make the adjustments. He says, if you look in it in the word and continue in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, mm, how do I avoid forgetting? Is repeating. Repeating is where I don't forget. This message that you're hearing tonight, this should not be the first and last time you should be listening to it because you will not receive everything that is being taught tonight. Someone said, when you hear a message for the first time, you only retain 6% of it. 
if you listen to it six times, he said, they said you retain something around 80, 90% of it. And the more you listen to it, the more percentage you, you, you're able to retain. He said, when that man goes in and he looks at it, if you continue in it, and there's not a forgetful hearer, but does the word, this man will be blessed in what he does. He's talking about prosperity. He's talking about blessings. He's talking about blessings. This man is blessed in whatever he does. Whatever she does, she's blessed. When she looks and he looks in the word and continue in it. And don't forget. So I'm here to help you tonight. To help you. How do we practice not forgetting? It's by repeating meditation. I want you to notice the Bible doesn't say to memorize the word, which memorization is good. There's a difference between memorization and meditation. To memorize, you have to depend upon yourself, upon the strength of your mind to remember what you have memorized. But when you meditate, it gets from your mind to your spirit. And when the times arrive that you need it, it comes out, it comes immediately to your remembrance. That's what, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, when the spirit has come and abides in you, he will remind you of the things that I have spoken to you. You remember, Jesus said that. When the Holy Spirit has come, he will not only come upon you, but he will abide in you. He will guide you into all truth. He will teach you all things and guide you into all truth. And he says, and he will remind you of all things that I have spoken to you. And he will even show you things to come. Hmm. That's when the word of God gets into your heart, which is your spirit. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The more of God's word we get in us, we speak it. And the more you speak it, to yourself, that's how you meditate. I'm not talking about memorizing. There are some people have uh, minds that they can memorize verse and hundreds and hundreds of verses. I don't know whether you're like that or not. I'm not quite like that. I have to meditate. If I try to remember all these verses, oh, it's very difficult for me. But if I meditate upon it, it becomes such a part of me that when I need it, it comes forth. I can speak it clearly and accurately because I meditated on it. And that's what God was saying to Joshua. And that's what God is saying to us. So you become a part of you. Amen. So you can say what God says at the right time, at the right place, and you get the right results. Amen. Finally, when he looks in the, in the law of liberty or the word of God and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer. This one, this one, that's verse, 20, that's verse 25 of James, first chapter. This one will be blessed in whatever he or she does. He says you'll be blessed in whatever you do. That's powerful. These are God's promises to us. God promises. I was, uh, I happened to go through, uh, Facebook just recently, and I saw something that I won't, somebody posted this, I don't know who posted it, in fact, there's a name, but I won't say who it is, and I was intrigued, I was blessed by it, and I thought I'll share it with you, and it says this, it says, this pandemic is revealing that a lot of people aren't really in relationship with God, they're just addicted to church, mm. <laughs> that's what a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. And it's a truthful statement. I said again, this pandemic is revealing that a lot of people aren't really in a relationship with God. They're just addicted to church. And usually that would be the people that are running afraid and scared, even though they've heard the word for years, but they've never practiced it, never walked, never acted on it. And if you're, if you're living in fear, you can't live in faith at the same time. Because faith and fear don't mix. It's like oil and water. It doesn't mix. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Faith and fear. If you're living in faith, you won't live in fear. But if you live in fear, you can't live in faith at the same time. That's another message for another time. I want to talk about that because we, we're going to talk about the power of God's word and talk about how to live by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. He's talking to the children of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. But for now, I'll have to leave you. And I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed and I'm glad that you joined me tonight. But I promise you this, we'll come right back in our next teaching, our next uh, teaching, and we'll continue from where we left off. I hope you've been blessed. I hope the word has encouraged you. I hope you're able to go back and, and read or listen to this program, and listen to this message once again. What you've heard today, it's just 6% you'll be able to retain. That's just the way uh, they have determined when someone hears a message, a 40, 45 minute message, you only retain about 6% of it. Most people, that's the average. But if you go back and listen to it again, let it sink into your soul, your mind, your emotion, and let it get into your spirit. If you'll go back and listen to it over and over again until next time we meet again. But I have to say, God bless you. It is so glad. I'm so glad that you're able to join me tonight. And we, we, we're going to be back with you again uh, next Wednesday. And I want you to pray or, or let us know. I, I, am, I am contemplating whether we should do this every night and every day until this lockdown is lifted. Because I've got so much I want to share with you and encourage the people of God, encourage the children of God. We all need to be encouraged. I hear the word from others, and I have an opportunity to share the word with you. And I trust by Almighty God, I trust you've been encouraged. Let faith alive and let faith come alive in your heart. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. God bless you. We'll see you next time.